Rebecca, thanks for coming on the Vantage Point podcast. First Hello, of all, thank how you, you so much for having me. I'm really good. I've had a very chill Sunday. So yeah, look forward to talking to you today. <laughs> <laughs> My first question for you, why is it important to move? You know, there are certain needs that every single human has. And when those needs are not fulfilled, then it's very difficult to flourish. And I think one of those very basic needs is the need for movement and for interaction with our environment and is the need to be connected to our bodies and for me movement is what meets that need and I feel like you know we have been sort of we have been sort of we have been developed in a way yeah, yeah it's yeah. almost like a requirement yeah. right and yeah something that's like something within us where it's like we feel the need to do it and a lot of our um you know our office jobs and the lifestyle we have these days exactly. it, it's exactly. almost almost opposite to that so we have to kind of create that opportunity for us to move I only asked you that straight off the bat because you know you're very into your fitness um how did you get into training like what so, made you start I think the first time I went to the gym I must have been about 18 or 19 and it was around the time do you know like the gen celta times kind of you know doing your glute workout etc so that was kind of what got me into oh, yeah, the like gym typical typical gym girl <laughs> <laughs> and i remember yeah. one of the first times I, I went to the gym i was asking like the fitness instructor the, about some exercises and i was telling them you know i don't want to lift like heavy weights i don't want to get bulky you know i had I kind of had that mindset at the start so that was kind of my beginning because I, I didn't really grow up doing much movement or much sport. I was more sort of academic. And yeah, I never saw myself as someone that, you know, was into movement or into sport or into physical development. So. Oh, really? Those were my beginnings. <laughs> right. Oh, interesting. Um, I know it's nowadays you do a lot of um, calisthenics. Um, would you say calisthenics are a good place to start? Right, so I I actually started off with, with weight training and I did that for quite a few years, so two years, I think two or three years, two years before COVID and I had a break and I started again. And I did that mainly for sort of like bodybuilding, let's say, just to build a good physique. And I found after some time that doing only sort of weight training or gym-based um, and sort of weight-based training, I wasn't developing my body to its full my body to its full potential like I wasn't developing its functionality I feel like there was a lot of ego in just you know going to the gym lifting heavy yeah. uh, but and, and that wasn't that wasn't that translating potential. yes it wasn't fully translating I was developing yeah. a lot of imbalances and then I discovered calisthenics and I thought well you know I can deadlift over 100 kilos you know I can squat 70 80 at the time but I can't even I can barely do a pull-up right <laughs> so yeah. you know I felt like a lot of what I was doing at the gym wasn't translating into functional strength and kind of ha having the mastery of of my body so yeah that's kind of what got me into calisthenics and if it's a good place to start I think it just depends kind of which way you approach it I don't feel like there is a good or a or a bad way to to get into movement like any way that yeah. kind of sparks joy in you or makes you want to move is, is the right way way for you it might be calisthenics it might not be however i do wish i started training calisthenics a bit earlier because because it takes quite a long time to develop your strength to do even sort of most basic moves right yeah interesting i see you training in um trees a lot <laughs> what's the benefit <laughs> of training outdoors all right so i haven't been uh, training with trees lately uh, it's cold it's cold to be fair <laughs> yeah it's not even it's cold yeah cold is one thing but also it rains a lot <laughs> and once i tried to climb trees after it was raining and i almost like slipped and it fell off a tree so i thought okay you know what i'm going to wait till the summer to do it again and what got me into training outdoors oh basically i got into um Kind of like quantum biology. Well, I didn't quite get into it, but I was following some people on, on Instagram who were kind of explaining quantum biology and basically the importance of a light environment. And they were saying how damaging kind of the artificial light is for us. And especially, you know, if you go to the gym, you have a train early in the morning or late at night and you're under the art artificial light, you know, it's not the most optimal environment for you to, for you to move. And yeah. I thought, okay, well, let me get outdoors and 
you know, try out more of an outdoor movement practice. And, and yeah, I just started kind of experimenting and seeing, okay, what is my environment affording me? You know, what can I do with this bench? What can I do with this tree? You know, how can I move? And actually, I just found so much joy in, yeah, like tree climbing or, you know, doing pull-ups on trees or, yeah, just kind of working with my environment and, and developing my body in that way. And yeah. I found... It looks cool as well. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> awesome. It's, it's really fun as well. Like you really kind of enter into like a flow state and you kind of forget about everything, especially when you're climbing trees because you have to be really, you know, embodied and focused on what you're doing because you don't want to you know, <laughs> fall off yeah. a tree and, you know, yeah. damage yourself. And, you know, it's great for functional strength, right? Because you, you're moving in different planes of motion and, you know, branches have different sizes and, you know, be like at the gym when you're only doing like exercises in one plane of motion or you know only one move of only one sort of size of weight you know there's only so much that you can develop however when you're working with your environment there is a lot more opportunity to, to develop yeah, a lot body. more variation hmm, 100%. variation yeah um yeah i know whenever i'm outdoors you know just going for a walk and the sun's out um you know even towards sunset when the sun's in your eyes you just feel good afterwards you know it's like mm. something about being outside um you know you get vitamin d from the sun and it, i mean i'm sure it's not just that you get so much benefits from being out there and like you were saying it climbing a tree is it's like a very primal movement that mm. we're not really replicating mm. in the gym mm. so and unless can... you're sorry go on no i feel like it just links to what we asked me on the start like why it's important to move the same way, yeah. you know, why it's important to be in nature. I feel there's just an innate need to be, to be connected to, to nature. And in the same way as this sedentary life, it's very artificial to us in the same way, kind of constantly been, been, in, been indoors and not being outside, not being connected to nature. That's quite art artificial to us as well. And I feel like being in nature just fulfills one of your most basic needs as well. Yeah. Yeah. Very primal need that's, that's mm. within within all of us and i feel like a lot of people miss out on that um i want to ask you about because you do a lot of quite i would say unique exercises <laughs> uh, that you post on instagram and some of them are very impressive like feats of strength um tell me about some of the most some of the hardest exercises you've attempted to do or techniques you've tried in the gym the exercises that I did I posted on my story and I feel like quite a lot of people replied to it be like whoa that's you know really impressive uh, impressive was the yeah I think the I was one called, of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah you were one of the <laughs> that's why I popped up in my head it was the it was the monkey push no monkey press sorry it was the monkey press so basically it's when uh, you hang in off your bar with one arm and then you're using your other arm to to shoulder press with a kettlebell and yeah, I think because uh, I feel like quite a lot of people don't have the one arm grip maybe developed as much. So it's quite no. difficult for, for some people to do. But yeah, I find it so fun because you really have to have that stability when you're hanging off it. And, you know, really have to develop your, your grip strength as well. I feel like it's a really nice functional strength exercise to, to work on. Yeah, there's no way you can cheat it either. So if you're hanging mm. off one arm, the other arm, you have to isolate your mm. delt to press yeah. with the other, um, <laughs> with the dumbbell or the kettlebell. Or, I, I can't remember what you used, but um, kettlebell, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. And um, yeah, it kind of, because you're swinging or you're, you're stuck in one place, you can't cheat it. You can't use your legs to do that mm. little boost to jerk the weight up. You can't <laughs> cheat. <laughs> yeah, that, that was very impressive. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people lack one arm grip strength like that's mm -hmm. quite a challenging thing to do um hold your body weight especially for people who are you know bodybuilders like you said mm -hmm. you were into bodybuilding to start a lot of people they'll put on the mass and then they won't be able to mm -hmm. do anything with that extra mass mm -hmm. i remember i remember when i did um i did powerlifting training for a while and I, I i bulked up to get stronger and i put on a lot of mass and then i went for a run <laughs> this was back in lockdown i went for a run and my knees were aching everything was like it didn't feel right nothing felt good you know no, yeah we're not meant to yeah <laughs> yeah no, um, what, that, what... that was kind of my revelation I was like oh, I was building a lot of muscle I was getting really strong but the, yeah my strength wasn't very functional you know we were struggling to like lift my arms up you know everything felt really tight so I felt like oh you know let me be a bit more balanced with my training yeah yeah it's all about the balance um so you touched on this earlier but I just want to get your thoughts on this um do you think girls in the gym 
should be scared of lifting heavy weights? And if not, why not? <laughs> yes, I feel I like I know your answer, but <laughs> I'll let you explain it. So as, as I mentioned, kind of <laughs> when I first started going to the gym, I was really scared of kind of getting this so bulky. But the thing is, unless it's I think it's quite hard for women to put on muscle. You can put on muscle, but you're not going to get huge. And I feel like for me, actually putting on a bit of muscle allowed me to have more of a face of hourglass physique. Because I used to have, I'm quite sort of hip and, and, and quad dominant. So I used to have quite like a pear-shaped figure how, and yeah, had like very, very narrow sh- shoulders as well. And actually going to the gym and lifting heavier and, you know, doing deadlifts and pull downs and pull ups allowed me to <clears throat> develop my back a bit more. And actually rather than looking more, you know, more manly or more bulky, it allowed me to develop a more symmetrical physique. So, yeah, yeah unless you on like steroids, I feel like it's really hard for women to get, unless you have like insane, you know, genetic inheritance, like a propensity to build a muscle, which uh, I don't feel like women have as much then it's really hard to get to a point when you're when you're really bulky and you can always you know if you feel like you're gaining too much muscle you can always change uh, your program so you so that it's geared toward developing more strength rather than for high hypertrophy so yeah ladies don't yeah. be scared to <laughs> lift heavy and gain gain muscle <laughs> yeah absolutely um i mean people who you know you're talking about physique um i know a couple of girls who do like bikini comps right so they'll do like a physique um bodybuilding type competition and so they they look how most people kind of goal body is right Mm. and um so they're very lean but what they do they train their lats they build their lats so it Mm. gives them Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, lats mm -hmm. i mean like the muscle under your arm here which is part of your back right um i know you know this it's just you know more so people understand (laughs) (laughs) um and and yeah they build their lats so it creates that hourglass shape that you're you're describing there so it makes the illusion that your waist is smaller by Mm. building your back to be Mm -hmm, bigger mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and stronger at the same time i guess you know um and yeah what you're saying then about strength like yeah if you if you feel like you're getting too too bulky or too muscular focus on strength you're not going to be putting on muscle when you're training for strength you're just going to be getting stronger and probably lifting you know if you put your mind to it lift more than all the guys in the gym <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's the thing like as i mentioned for me i started going to the gym purely for physical reasons and uh, as i got into it i just really fell in love with the process of developing my strength getting stronger and also developing the functionality of my body and it wasn't just like the physical strength, but as you, as you build your physical strength, your, your mental strength increases as well. So, you know, I feel like whatever get, gets you into the gym, you know, whatever reasons get you in the gym are fine. Just, just get in there and then, you know, you'll see probably your yeah. goals and your aims you develop as you, as you progress as well. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's definitely um, a, like a spiritual side to, to mm. well-being. Um, how else, Aside from the gym, how else would you develop your well-being on the spiritual side? Yes, that's a really good question. I I try to look at my sort of personal development or my well-being quite holistically. So yes, movement is one part of it, and yeah, gym is one part of my movement practice. I, I do a bit of yoga, I do a bit of jujitsu, and for me, for example, yoga is as much a physical, mental, but also spiritual practice. But by kind of uh, carve out the time for myself just to be in silence in in peace and kind of reconnect back to my body reconnect back to uh, to my mind and my spirit and and even with doing jiu-jitsu as well I feel like that's got a spiritual component for me or like a well-being component because I feel like I'm part of a community which again is one of our sort of innate needs to that, that we need to meet being part of a community having that sense of belonging and so yes that's kind of my movement practice and then I've got some like mental practices as well so for me meditation and just spending time in solitude and and reflecting and kind of reconnecting back to myself because it's really important for me to to have the time and the space throughout the day and throughout the week to you know just go on long walks or even sit in silence with myself and kind of check in you know how am I feeling what's been going on for me 
kind of reconnecting back to my values as well and what was important you know love peace freedom <laughs> understanding compassion and and yeah i think self-reflective practices being able to to develop that relationship with yourself it, it's very important for your spiritual development but also on the other side of this is on one hand you have the solitude and the reconnection to yourself but i think also for, for your spiritual development, it's really important to be connected to others and feel like you're part of a whole and feel like you can make a difference to, to another person's life and feel like you can have that connection. So, so yeah, I feel like there are many dimensions to, to spiritual health and mental health and, and the physical health. It's about looking at your life holistically and asking yourself, what is it that you need to, to flourish? And then trying to slowly create a life which, which enables you to do that. And, I feel like universally for, for everyone, that will include time spent with yourself in solitude, in peace and silence, time spent with others where you can connect and, and feel part of a community, time spent moving your body, eating nutritious food, time spent in nature, kind of carving out the time to, to feel connected to your natural environment and kind of experiencing beauty, things like sunrises, sunsets. Yeah, I feel like we there's a lot to, tend it. to oh, yeah there's a lot to it i mean we tend to overcomplicate things but actually if you just break it down you know community a good relationship with yourself movement good food nature you know these are your core tenets <laughs> yeah you've done a great job there of just explaining <laughs> everything really like you know what i think a lot of people can take from that um and you know people people find it tough to find um uh, particularly the solitude part finding time to escape the noise and escape you know the constant demands from from your phone from work you know I, when i say from your phone i mean you know the likes of tiktok and stuff that just takes your attention and it's like you're mindlessly just scrolling and scrolling but not really having time to reflect on anything you're consuming and i think that's kind of a bit damaging to people these days you know they're not taking time to sort of reflect on the things they experience and learn anything from it you know and um just interesting you brought up uh jujitsu right is that what, that's what you do yeah yes. um yeah it's interesting you brought that up i think that's another thing that's uh within us we have this urge to i guess fight right mm. like there's something within mm. us that wants to you know that you know humans are known for war <laughs> that's not a secret or anything but if if we're able to practice um you know spending time fighting uh, or you know in a in a good like positive environment taking that energy out there then that will benefit every other aspect of our life mm, would you agree? agree yeah i agree with what you said i think yeah that was very interesting and yeah i feel like there are many drives and and passions and yearnings within us right and sometimes some of them can be labeled as negative or positive etc but it's really it's all about how we directed that that energy you know if you have yeah. kind of like a drive towards you know fight it that doesn't have to be bad right because you can use that to protect others or you can use that to develop yourself or you can use that to do martial art for example right you know it's how we use those different drives and and, and yearnings within us that what determines you know whether it's yeah. good or bad right yeah i've seen you use the phrase um intentional living mm. would you say that's what that's about or how would you describe that yes for me intentional living <sighs> I think it's very easy to kind of go for life a bit mindlessly, if that makes sense, and of not stopping, not pausing to reflect on what is that I want from life? How is that I want to a live Aimlessly, my life? maybe. Aimlessly? Yes, aim yeah. And kind of going for life without reflecting on what is that you need, what, is, what, what are my values, uh, what's that I want from life, or it's very easy also to follow uh, kind of societal or uh, our families or friendship groups kind of ideas of what it is that we we ought to do and for me intentional intentional living is just about taking a step back and kind of reflecting on what is it that I want from my life how is it that I want to live my life right what is it that I value you know yeah. for me it's important to to have a life where which is joyful, which is peaceful, where I feel free, which is full of love, where, where I feel like I'm living my purpose and I'm 
it's full of meaning, right? So if this is my intention for my life, this is how I want to live my life, then now I'm trying to kind of cultivate thoughts and behaviors and habits and also choose actions which enable me to, to create a life which, which fulfills my needs and which is in alignment with that, what, what, what I want from it. And yeah, that's kind of how I see living an intentional life. Wow, yeah, yeah, really interesting. Um, how would you say, um, you, you've clearly reached a point in your life where you've got this perspective on things now. <laughs> um, what kind of environment does someone need to, to put themselves in uh, to achieve that kind of mindset where they start looking at things a bit differently? Mm. <laughs> I feel like there are many routes to, to do that. For me, it was one of the routes which you can, which kind of you're forced to take and the route kind of that I took. Uh, there was a point in my life where I was really depressed and I was experiencing a lot of pain and it got to a point where the pain of kind of, yeah, the pain that I was experiencing on an everyday basis, it was just too much. And I tried different, you know, I tried running away from it. I tried different forms of escapism and nothing was working. So I got to almost like a critical point where I knew I had to, something had to change. So like the yeah. fear of, not changing became greater than the fear of changing like the pain threshold was too high and it kind of forced me to just start looking at things differently i feel like when you a lot of the time when when things don't go right in our lives we tend to look outwards and kind of focus on other people you know, our families yeah. friends blame, jobs, blame things blame people yes and yeah. i did that for a long time and realized you know I can blame, you know, I've been blaming other things and outside circumstances and I'm still feeling like this, right? So is there anything that I can do to actually make myself feel better and actually transform myself and live a more meaningful and purposeful life? And, and yeah, when the pain got too much, I just started to look inwards and doing a lot of personal work and, and inner work, which, which allowed me to kind of have these reflections on, on life now, but it wasn't an easy journey. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. But yeah, it seems like um, it seems like you've done a good job of navigating those those bad parts in your life because you're, from what I can gather now, anyway, your energy and your kind of your mindset, your outlook now is is really cool. It's really good, and you can see that you know in in your social media, you you make an effort to sort of provide value to people and and bring people up, show people what they can do. You know, I noticed that. Um, so for you, what what would you say causes a feeling of um? uh what, what would make you feel dissatisfied or do you ever feel that way yeah I do feel dissatisfied sometimes and I feel like feelings are usually our guides right so if you're feeling a feeling of dissatisfaction or of anxiety this is an indication that there is something in your life that's not in alignment with your kind of highest needs or highest de desires and yeah for me dissatisfaction is usually a symptom that one of our core needs is not being satisfied, right? <laughs> so there is something yeah. that you need from life to thrive and to flourish. And currently that need is not being met. And that could be a need for purpose. That could be a need for meaning. That could be a need for a community or for belonging. That could be a need for, for even movement or for nature. So yeah, whenever I feel the satisfaction, I try to take a step back and think, okay, what is it that's causing this dissatisfaction? Which one of my core needs is not being currently met? And why is it not being met? And is there anything that I can do to meet it? Or is there anyone that can help me meet it? However, I feel like a lot of the time when we when we feel the satisfaction, because of how uncomfortable uncomfortable the feeling can be, we we don't want to sit with ourselves and we don't want to ask these questions. We don't want to start reflecting on what it is that's going on within us. We kind of start distracting ourselves. You know, that's when kind of abuse of social media can come into play. So other forms of escapism, so you know, going out, drinking, etc. Because we, we're kind of scared to face that feeling. Whereas, yeah. and I used to be like that as well in the past. Whereas now if I feel like some dissatisfaction coming up, because I'm quite in tune with my emotions and with how I'm feeling, I'm like, okay, what is going on? Let me kind of have a coffee date or a tea date with myself and figure it out. How am I feeling? 
if I'm feeling dissatisfied, Those. what is the cause of this dissatisfaction? And let's see what I, once I give myself space to kind of just feel and experience and yeah, kind of become in tune with that feeling, I then go on to the next stage, which is, okay, so what, what can I do about it? And this is yeah. kind of how I go on about maintaining my sanity in this world and my well-being. <laughs> Yeah, that's good because, you know, a, a lot of people, it seems, especially these days, a lot of people are very dissatisfied, um, you know, with their lives and or, or at least with certain things within their life, especially with, you know, the age of social media where there's a lot of comparison to be made. Oh, my life doesn't feel as good as what their life seems to be. And, you know, we draw comparisons like that, even subconsciously, without even thinking about it. What would your advice be to someone who who does feel dissatisfied about a part of their life? Is, you know i'm not surprised there are a lot of people who are feeling dissatisfied about their lives it's because i think a big big part of it is because of the sort of lifestyle that has been promoted as the sort of successful lifestyle right or the one that you should follow in order to feel good which is quite artificial you know things like have a very high paying but also really stressful job you know sit at your desk all the time pursue only materials of goods you know pursue pleasure etc and you know it's a fallacy and when you actually think about what what is it that as i was speaking about before what is it that we need to to flourish you know it's not working 100 hours a week at your desk-based job you know no. it's not going out to clubs every friday and getting drunk or you know doing drugs or party until three or four or five a.m in the morning you know it's not buying expensive things you know these are not the things that provide satisfaction however for a lot of people they feel like oh this is what i need to get from life in order to do it however when you actually think about moments that brought the most so satisfaction or nourishment to, to your life when you think about things that actually make you feel good again you just go back to those most basic needs you know needs for belonging you know probably one of the most beautiful moments in your life has been when you felt part of a community or it was like a happy family moment or a happy moment with with your friends if you think about the times when you felt um so the most healthy was probably when you were going to sleep at the same time, waking up at the same time, eating nutritious food, uh, moving your body, not when you were going out, you know, drinking, etc. So I feel like we got quite a few things wrong. And yeah. if you really want to take care of your well-being, I think you have to take a step back and look at your life and look at the life that you're pursuing and ask yourself if these things I am pursuing, whatever they may be, I've, I've enabled my well-being, I've enabled my flourishing, I've been actually making me feel good. And this was kind of the process that, that I went through, whereby you know, I went to university, I thought I need to have like, either like a high paying job in finance, or maybe I have to you know, do a PhD, etc. And I felt like I had to pursue a certain sort of idea of success. But I realized in the process that none of it was actually making me feel good. And it's not about not doing it, but it's about kind of looking at the big picture and asking yourself, what is it that you actually need to flourish exactly. and thrive? Yeah. And that will differ from person to person, but I do believe there's some sort of objective truth when, when it comes to well-being. There are some basic foundations of well-being. Number one, your physical well-being, or like some satisfaction of your physical needs, which is A, get good quality sleep <laughs> b eat good quality whole foods uh, c move your body d get into nature and then carve out some time for yourself you know just to relax and and reconnect back to your body and back to your breath and back to your mind and then spend some time being with other people connecting to others on a deeper level you know actually having meaningful conversations on and meaningful interactions you know become part of a community or, or yeah. start creating one i feel like these are the things that we we actually need and actually are not the things that that we are pursuing and this is what's causing a lot of dissatisfaction. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I think you you probably spoke to a lot of people there to to how they feel currently. Um, you know, uh, I I remember being in a similar position, and I look back on some of the times you know that I really did have a really good time, especially you know even on nights out and stuff. You know, I'm not averse to a night out, but when I look back on what made 
my mm. favorite nights out good it was spending time with like friends it was it was doing stuff mm. together with people um now I'll, I hate to cut this podcast short, but we're going to have to wrap up. So I've got one final question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw your list of New Year's resolutions and I was just wondering, um, would you say <laughs> you have, and I quote, escaped the matrix and become a full-time <laughs> forest pixie yet? <laughs> Unfortunately, not yet. Oh, it was really funny. I think it was like a day after New Year's and I went to the forest and I was just like, you know, walking barefoot and, and grounded. It was like a really beautiful moment. And I was just like, oh, you know, I do enjoy my job, but a lot of it is in front of my laptop and I just love being in nature. So, yeah, that's kind of what what brought me to <laughs> to write one of those resolutions. I was I mean, it was just a joke, but. Unfortunately, no, it hasn't been fulfilled yet. However, I am working towards living a more sort of balanced life. I'm making some adjustments to, to my work. I'm hoping to work a bit less hours from, from spring onwards and kind of work less from, from my laptop. So slowly but surely, <laughs> hopefully I, I build the life which is more in alignment with, with my needs. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Thanks for coming on, Micah. I appreciate your time. Oh, Thanks thank again. you so much for having me. <laughs> Take care.